And I think the first thing is that the church has to set an example um, by coming together as one, encouraging and supporting Christians all over the country. We're going through a hard time now. Over 100 million Christians in this country, not a small number. And we need the church, we need a strong church, a virile church, a church that really does show that it cares. And I commend our church leaders, I commend them for the job that they have done so far. And I want to encourage them to continue that good job. But we must have Christian unity. And we must be sensitive as Christians to the challenges that Christians are facing in Nigeria. If you want peace in Nigeria, then my message is simple and clear. Nobody should torment, marginalize, enslave, or attempt to destroy the Christian faith. And the targeting of Christians is unacceptable. The targeting of anybody, Christian or Muslim, by any other group of people or those that for some reason don't want to see them alive and well is unacceptable. And we need to come together and urge our government to do a lot more to ensure that the safety and security of this country is guaranteed. And particularly for the Christian community. Christian communities have been targeted all over the country for the last num you know, number of years. It's unacceptable to us, and I'm glad that the church is rising up to the occasion. It's an honor for me to be here, and I'm pleased to be here. Sir, sir, in most cases, when, when, when they talk, they will see, the church will see, free, free, free. Is that enough, sir? Simple answer. The Bible says faith without works is dead. So any true Christian will know that prayer is a wonderful thing. It sustains us, it keeps us, and that's expected. You know, from God, and it's expected as a Christian, you must pray. But you must also work. You can't sit in your home and say you're praying and um, not work because you'll starve to death. Now, in a situation like this, where our people are being targeted, our people are being killed, and not just Christians, innocent Nigerians all over the world, all over the country are being slaughtered. Christians are meant to rise up in, with a level of passion and stand against evil. That is what Christianity is all about the ability to resist evil and that it may flee. And when you do that, that evil flees. And I'm, for one, tired and fed up of people saying that we should just sit and do nothing and say nothing. We must speak truth to power. We must stand up for the weak. We must speak for the voiceless. We must stand up and fight for the oppressed. And we must say where there's an act of injustice against one person, whether you're Christian or you're a Muslim or even an unbeliever that doesn't believe in God, an action against such a person, one of them is an action against all of us, and we must stop it. Well, the daughter of Zion is still in captivity, talking about Leah, all this while. Is the Christian dog in Nigeria doing enough to see that she's free? The, 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 first of all, I believe that the Christian community in this country, you know, have said all that they can possibly say. We don't have, Christians are not in charge of any security agency. Christians are not in charge of the judiciary. Christians are not in charge of the executive. Christians are not in charge of the legislature. Christians are not in charge of anything in this country anymore. You don't like to hear it, your publisher may not like you to say it, but that's the truth. But what we can do is go back to our churches and encourage our people that we must speak to our government and tell our government to do the right thing for people like Leah Sharibu, who as far as I'm concerned, was abandoned by this government. I don't for one minute believe that they pushed hard enough for her to be free. She was the only Christian amongst all those girls that was not free. And they came out boldly and said, because she's a Christian, she will not be free. That should have spurred the government to do far more than they're doing because this is a blot on this government. It is a spiritual wound on this government that a hundred million Christians in this country actually believe today that if you are captured by these evil men and you are kidnapped and carried away, that your government will not care about you simply because you're a Christian. Meanwhile, they care about the Muslims and ensure that the Muslims are free. Unacceptable, and it's something that we should stand against. But we are doing enough. We will continue to do more. And I'm sure CAN, Christian Association of Nigeria, and uh, the churches, church leadership, will continue to do all that they've been doing. Thank you. I think that as leaders in this country, we always have to give a signal of warning at the appropriate time, in as gentle and in, in, as, in as restrained a manner as possible. When we see things are going wrong, we need to stand up and say so in order to ensure things are deteriorating. I am deeply concerned about one of the nominees uh, who has scaled through the Senate um, from Gombe State, Paul Patami, uh, Sheikh Patami, who is now a minister, a ministerial designate. Now, this man has been inciting 
religious turmoil and discord. I watched a video recently in which he insulted Christians, denigrated Christians, threatened Christians, and even began to weep out of passion for his faith and saying that Christians were against his faith and that the government had treated Christians with kid gloves. For a man like that to be appointed as a minister is a disgrace, unacceptable to the entire Christian community. Now, you may have Christians that say, no, we don't mind. They're not real Christians. Because no real Christian will stand up and watch it and, and keep quiet whilst his faith is being denigrated. And I want to send a signal to this government and this administration and to President Buhari that putting such a man in such a position is a very dangerous thing. I have nothing against him personally. I do not wish evil for the man. But they should check him and they should tell him to stop this nonsense. Attacks on the Christian faith. We are all one in Nigeria, whether you're Christian or Muslim. We must stand together as Nigerians, work together and exhibit mutual respect for one another. This is not a place that you can come and insult the faith of others and you're a minister or whatever and think you can get away with it. We will resist this, we will stand against it, we will not accept it and we will not treat him with the respect that a federal minister ought to be treated with unless he stops threatening us and attacking the Christian community.